So our little Manitou telehandler is one of my favorite machines I have ever bought. But we've done some little bits and pieces on it so far, but it has had a little tiny oil weep ever since we've had it, and it's getting worse. Mike's already had a look at it to tighten everything up, but it's actually in the spool block of where you, you know, make everything move. So we are going to go and put it into another shed. We're gonna get it jacked up, and we're gonna take that spool block out and send it off to get completely reconditioned. Well, that's what we hope. I haven't got that. I'm praying that I haven't got to buy a new one. And then we can put it back in and hopefully that solves all the oil leaks. And then she can just go wherever we want. We haven't got to worry about where she's working outside because we just try to keep her sort of fairly local at the moment just so that we can, you know, keep an eye on where that oil's dripping. But it's not, it's not, it's not bad. It's just annoying. So, right, let's go and find out and see what we've got to do. So just to show you what the problem is, is the spool on here, the good one, which is the third service and your boom in and out is working absolutely brilliantly. But the one you use most is your up and down and crowd. And as you can see, it's a bit like a dick in a bucket at the moment. So it's very, very loose in there. Mike has tightened it up twice and it's just, you know, just keeps going like it. So, you know, we can stop the oil leaking when we tighten it up, but it's just not staying where it needs to. So underneath this plate, Mike will take it off and it will show us the spool block. We then need to be able to jack up the boom. Well, we can lift up the boom beforehand, but then we need to leave it where it's to, so we can get in underneath in there, because that's her just there, if you can see. There she is. And that's where we need to be able to get to, to be able to get her out. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's, you know, fairly easy to get to especially compared to the digger hydraulic issues we had the other week, which was right in the heart of the digger. And that was just an absolute ball ache. This hopefully should be a little bit easier, but we're gonna put it into another shed so that we can jack it up and leave it there. So it's not gonna be in the way because we've got the other forklifts so we can use them for the time being. And then once that's done, there's some other projects we want to do on this, like the back covers over here to get that all covered in properly, put the door on it, just loads of just tidying up jobs left to do. Let's go and get this into the other shed, get it jacked up and see what's wrong. So I've just had a tenant move out of this shed, so we're going to use this one for the time being. So it's out of the way. Spool block. There she is, look. Hmm. At least we can get to her nice and easy. You see, the thing I just saw drip then. Anyone else see the drip? Yeah, so I need to shed some light on the situation in a minute for Mike because there's not great electric in here. But now this tenant's moved out. It's quite a nice little building, really. It's a little garage here and then more of a sort of a workshopping area slash office area in here. We've even been left to wireless. I wonder if that works. It's even got a viewing gallery. It's got a windows trailer. Look at that. Old Mole Valley Farmer sticker from many moons ago. Hey, rat, Molly, where's rats? Rats! Rolly, where are rats? Right here. Skss, skss, skss. Right here. Skss, skss. Where are the rats? Where's him, boy? Hey, come here. <laughs> right, so Mike's got his prop in here to obviously support everything and keep everything safe, which is ideal. It's got the pack out light to shed a bit of, you know, a bit more on the situation. And Mike just pointed out that someone's been in here before because they've put the coloured cable ties on it to match up for which pipe goes where. So, well, that's going to save a minute or two just to be able to identify them. What do you make of it, Mike? Well, we're in the dry. Yeah. So, got a bit of light. <laughs> yeah. What's the plan of action then? Well, as you explained, I already propped it up, let the pressure's off. Take the panel off inside so I can gain a bit of access there. And then, as you can see, he's dripping off the off the block. Just one drip went down then. Yeah. And uh, make sure all that all those lovely little markers that they've got on there relate properly to where where they should do. Mm -hmm. And if not, as we'll make our own marks. And then on do your pipe work, making sure it's really relieving the pressure as it go. Yeah. And then block out. And go from there. And do you reckon it's salvageable? You reckon it's reconditionable? Oh, I would imagine so. I would. It's all there, fairly, fairly I solid. It's only the internals, isn't it? Do just wonder why they've already been in there already once. Hmm. 
You don't reckon that's from that's not from factory then? You wouldn't get that. The no, colour. No, I haven't got there too close yet, but it looks. I would expect the factory ones to at least cut the ta tails off the mm -hmm. cable ties. Oh yeah, good shout. Right, so I'm going to leave Mike to undo his pipes and remove the block, and then we'll get the block down on the bench and have a look at it a little bit closer to see where the problems lie, and then work out where we're going to send it to get it reconditioned. All right, Mike's up here on his own, so we're going to see if the radio comes to life. A Greenfield property, and uh, I oh. want to make sure that the system that the Ministry of Defence has that understands that we're dealing with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it works, but how well? Well, actually, here's the block. Oh, yes, looking rather grim and oily. So, Mike, what have we, um, what have we found? Well, I would probably say it's leaking out through the end of the spools. Because you see it's quite oily in there. Mm -hmm. And then it's just spreading out and dripping down over. And that's where your leak's coming from. Yeah. So there's, there's no leaks on the pipes or anything? Well, like not on the pipes, no. Yeah. But I would probably say, well, you're in there, you might as well change the... Because it's a bankable block. So basically you've got three bolts, three long studs that go through there. So if, if you only wanted for an application with two spools, you'd have shorter bolts, use the end caps and just have two. But in between each of these, there'll be some O-rings and some seals of various descriptions. So you might as well change the lot while you're in there. Right, so now we're going to get it sent away so the proper, you know, hydraulic people can sort it out. Mike said to be fair, we could probably do it ourselves. But if a hydraulic company do it, it's then their responsibility that it all works properly. And you get a little bit of a warranty with it then as well. So we should be on to a winner with that. It does look like it's just seals, there's no cracks, no other problems. So yeah, right, let's wait for that to turn back up again and we'll get it fitted. And if by magic, our valve block is back and it is all done. Yes, it has been sorted, well, hopefully. And now I've had it done by a company called Derek Lane & Co, who are based down in Newton Abbott in Devon. I've got a bit of a funny story about it, really. So after we took the block out of the manatee the other day, I went in on the old Google machine to find someone to be able to repair it because I wasn't aware of anyone. So I thought, you know, type into Google hydraulic valve repair place. Anyway, comes up with the company. I thought, cool, right, let's give them a call. Let's give them a call. And I'll be honest, her English wasn't brilliant and our conversation didn't go overly well. And then she started saying, well, if we can't fix it in the UK, we can send it to the States to be repaired. And I thought, oh, this is getting a bit over complicated. And I thought it's just a simple valve block, well, reasonably simple valve block to be able to repair. Of course, they can do it in the UK. So if, that, if, if there's a company, in the, I'm not going to mention names, but if that company is listening, you never know. Train your staff, because she didn't have a bloody clue. Not a cuckoo what was going on. Anyway, so I thought I'd change my search and put Devon at the end of it, because that's where we are. And a company Newton Abbott called, came up on the, on the Google machine. So I looked into, I found the phone number, gave him the ring, a chap called Daniel answered the phone. And he said, that's right, James, yeah, no problem at all. I'll put you through to Graham in the workshop. Now, I love it when someone says Graham in the workshop because I used to have a Graham in my workshop and that always went swimmingly well. Miss Graham to bits, absolutely amazing. And then, so Graham came through the phone, talked him through it, he went, yeah, James, not a problem, absolutely fine. He goes, whereabouts are you? So I told him where you were. He goes, oh, I only live five miles down the road. Tell you what, I'll pick it up tomorrow morning. So this was only last week. And he came in on the Friday morning, picked it up, had a nice chat, really nice guy, really nice company and he ended up then dropping it back on the Tuesday, this Tuesday morning. So it was only away for like four days, and that was including the weekend. So amazing company. Their link is in the description if you're looking for any hydraulic repairs. They make cylinders and rams and valve blocks and motors and low, anything hydraulic and pneumatic, they'll sort out. Absolutely brilliant. So yeah, massive thanks to Graham. Awesome guy, really helpful, and exactly the guy you want to know. So yeah use Derek Lane & Co, which I do believe their company name is changing. So, but I expect the Derek Lane link below will still take you to their new company name when that changes. Anyway, let's get this valve block back in the Manitou and then we can, well, hopefully it works. And then we can thank Graham again. <laughs> right, let's do it. Ah, good news, Mike, your cable ties are still on the end. Let's see you know which pipe goes where. Yeah, I didn't uh, put they on anyway, so somebody been in there before. Yeah, the stamp that was center punch. 
Oh, you stamped it as well? Yeah. Then oh, yeah, you there can't, you go. You can't, little dots there, look. You can't take a centre punch out, can you? No, that is very true. That is very true. So, yeah. Well, Mike cleaned it before it went anyway, but it is definitely cleaner. And, um, yes, yeah, so it's all in here where it was leaking from, in the top valves where your spool lever joined onto, and round here. So, we don't know if they've, you know, taken the whole thing apart and done it, but they said they pressure tested it, and hopefully everything should be good. All right, back in the temporary shed of love. As you can see, Mike's done a bit of a clear up in under there a minute. With it and Mike, do you have to, with the block and things, do you have to sort of refill it with oil or do you just let it pump through to the... No, he'll pump his old tray. Right. You might get a little bit of air, depending on the systems and that, you might get a little bit of air in the rams and that, but... Yeah. Just won't worry too much about that for now. No. Right, so I'll leave Mike to work his magic and get it all back together and then we'll fire up. How you be getting on, Michael? Oh, nearly there. Let's get in there. Last, oh, last pipe. Oh, nice. Look at that. Handsome. Once that's tightened up, we'll go around and put the battery terminal back on. Then I'd better give it a go and see if it works. Either piss oil everywhere or... Um, well, it'll work. Work, it'll work or it won't work or someone will go bang. Give her a bit of heat. All right. Battery still charged? <laughs> Oh, your, your flashing lights going, mate. Look at that. Do you have any good idea? Oh, yeah, you need to blow around a bit. Blow around. Well, there we go. I've already got oil there, look. Let me pop out. Pissing out anyway. Well, it's you know pretty good, mic, isn't it? Whoa. Not coming at the top, not coming at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> get Richard, get Richard to give it a good blast off, and us and keep yeah. an eye on it. Then. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now he's got a steam cleaner. Cool. He'd be like uh, happy as a pig in uh, the proverbial. That's the one. So good news, the Manitou is no longer going to be weighing itself on the floor like that down there. So all oil is hopefully sorted now. Uh, sort of a few bits to do with the engine, we need to service it at some point. But otherwise, well happy, proper job. Thank you very much to Graham, and the link for them is in the description below. And as always, Magic Mike has done a superb job on getting that sorted. So anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio, bye.